Okay, I wanted to show you guys some more fun sublimating things. So many people have asked, can you use photographs when you're sublimating? And I would say, yes, absolutely you can. So what I did was I found two images of little kids, must be related, they were right there in the same area, um, who I thought I would use, who I thought were super duper cute, and I would show you this. So these I found on the internet, but of course you can grab photos out of your own stash and just, um, if they're on your phone, of course, they're really easy to use. Otherwise, if they're photographs from someone who was living long ago and you want to make a commemorative cup or plaque or something like that, you can scan them in with your printer slash scanner machine. But anyway, I found these two guys and I would th thought I would use them because I thought it'd be cute with a... Um, what do you call it? Hero, superhero background. So you can see what I found right here when I finished. And this is the one I finished. So I'm going to show you how to do this and layer it up. The first thing I did with these images, though, was I gra I saved them. Then I came over here to um, remove background. Here it is right here, I think. Nope, remember. Here it is. Remove background. And there is one of the people that I did. But what I was going to do was upload an image and I went to my where I'd saved it on my computer like this and I said open and remove dot bg will remove the background just like that so easily right if there's any errors that you'd like to fix of course you can edit them uh, you can change the background if you want to even add a background to your image. The one thing I do like to do sometimes though is this. Uh, I'm gonna cancel that for a sec. And I'm gonna, when I go back to this part, I say I wanna download a high resolution one. Now I need to tell you that it does cost you money to do that. And I've spent a little bit of money to get the high resolution ones. Check it out though, you may not need to. Just download the regular one and it might be just fine for what you're doing. So that's what I did with this little guy and I did the same thing with the little girl. So these are what I ended up with. Let's go back to Silhouette. These are the ones I started with. Then over here I have hidden the ones that I ended up with. And look how good that remove background did. And again, I use the um, high resolution, but it may not even matter. So I can just get rid of these two kids now and bring these over here because that's what I'm going to put in my picture. I might as well resize them down a bit. So I'll make them small and then I'm just going to right click or click on this, hold down my alt key and make a duplicate. I'll move this one out of the way and I think I'll duplicate them as well and move that out of the way, way out of the way over here so we can work. So let's uh, go ahead and scroll in now. And this one, first what I'll do is tell you that I make my images about 8.25 wide. This is a little bigger by 3.5 tall. So I can just go ahead if I want to and make that 8 point, unlock the lock, and I'll make this 8.25 there, and I'll make this 3.5. And I found that's a size that I like on my 11 ounce mugs that I use. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and ungroup this. And all I want is I'm gonna get rid of all of this delete it all and I'm just going to make this let's see I guess I can ungroup again no release what I'm trying to do is to make it just so it's a solid color I can actually just make it white if I want to like that and if I really wanted to I could make it transparent but then you wouldn't be able to see it very well so I'll leave it as white so the next thing that I did was I just kind of smidgened them down a little bit more so I knew about which size they were going to be. I'm going to right click on the background and say send it to the back so that everything I bring up in here now will be in the front like that. Okay, so I want to have them about the same height, but maybe, maybe not. Okay, something like that. Okay. So then I got to thinking I wanted to get a nice background to put on this. So, you know, I love Creative Fabrica. So I went over to Creative Fabrica and there I came to this superhero digital paper, which is fabulous. I love this stuff and it looks like a lot of people do. Look, 197 people have added it to their 
favorites. So since I have the monthly subscription, and it's for sale right now if you're interested in it, but of course you can just get these one by one if you like, or search the internet for paper that you like. But since I own this subscription, and you can use these for commercial purposes, everything in Creative Fabrica you can use for commercial purposes. But anyway, all I did then was to download it, and then I got it down here. Here's my superhero zipped. They were all zipped up like this, came in like that. So I said extract all. And once I extracted all, then I got, let's see, it should be here. Superheroes. There it is, superheroes. There they are. These are all the files that I got in there that I could use. And of course, if I want to see them larger, I can come up here to view and view extra large icons so I can really see what it is that I might want to grab. Okay, so I'll minimize that. Let's go back to Silhouette now. So I'll think about what I might like to have for my backing. I'm going to go to File, Merge, and I think the one that I used was, I think the one that I used was this one. So I'll just open that up. Opens up really big over here, but all we have to do is bring it over. I'll bring this other one to the front by right clicking and bring to front. Then all I'm gonna do is grab both of these. You can hear my dog sneezing in the background. Oh. But I'll grab both of those. I'll come over here to the Modify panel and I'll say Crop. So that cropped it right like that. Now I might not want this this big, but that's the beauty of using patterns like this is that you can still come over here to the little paint palette on the right. And once that's open, go to the third icon over, which if you hover over it, it says Fill Pattern. And then usually it opens up like this. I would say advanced options, and that's when I can change the scale. So watch what happens when I move this slider. Whoops, I gotta click on it first, and then move the slider. Make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever I'd like. So what I ended up doing with these kids was this. Let me show you one more thing. Can you notice how the word splat and some of the drops are cut off down here? Another thing you can do in this pattern area is say pan pattern. When I click on this, it's going to be hard for you to see. And now do you see that little four headed arrow that came right there? That's going to allow me to move that pattern around however I'd like so that nothing in particular is cut off. Maybe there's a certain thing I like, but it looks like it just repeats itself a lot. So I'll just do it like that. That's perfect. All right, so the next thing I did was I decided that these kids, let's group this, if, oh no. I decided these kids, if I brought them, I'll send this to the back. Okay, if I brought them over here, it's kind of hard to see them, right? It's too busy. So that's when I decided to put the this little shape in there. I just came over to the shape tool. I probably could have found a better one online if I had spent a little more time, but I thought this one was fine to use, so I clicked on this and made a shape like this. And of course you can make it do whatever you want like that. And so I made it the right size so it would fit in here. Oopsie daisy. Come here you. And then what I did was I went ahead and changed its color. So I got just a yellow color like that. And then the next thing that I did, actually, if you wanted to, what you could do, scroll into that, double click on this again, and you can change that a little bit if you'd like. You know, how you have these things. Make it a little bit more pizzazzy. I don't know. All right, that's pretty good like that. So the next thing I did do with this one was I went ahead and uh, clicked on it to select it, came over here to the offset panel and said, offset. And I changed the offset to corner. And I probably made it a little bit smaller. Let's just make it 0.70. No, 0.60. Okay, then I filled that with black. 
like that. Then I made another one. So I can just hold down my Alt key. Now I've got to grab the offset and the yellow first and, dupe, and uh, group those. Otherwise they'll come apart. So now I can hold my Alt key down. And if I would like to, I can ungroup this now and just simply change the color of this one to maybe the blue. So I can get the eyedropper if I want to get this blue color. And I could go ahead and make it smaller if I want to and group it. And I'll bring it to the front by going right click. Whoops, bring to the front. So let's see how they'll look together. That looks pretty good. And then I'll just, uh, maybe I'll take the yellow one again. Alt, drag, so I drag another one. I'm going to ungroup it. And this one I think I'll make red. So just the white, the yellow part. Now I have that selected and you can tell here. I'll change that to the red if I want to get the same color of red. Just use the eyedropper. Group this together. And I'll put it back here. So I'm going to take these two and say move them to the front because I want to put this one in the very back. I'm not sure how I did it before, but that's what I want to do now. I'm just going to make it bigger like that. And I do believe the largest one I had on the front was yellow to help them show up. So there's the yellow one. So I'm going to make the blue one a little bit bigger. Oopsie. And I'll right click on the yellow one and say bring it to the front. So there's the yellow and the blue, just like that. And now I can bring my little guys over. Now I am going to probably want to, uh, whoops, click on them. And probably need to bring these to the front. And, okay, so what I did on the one I was doing was is this. Let's scroll in quite a bit. I decided that I wanted to make this a bit wider. So all I did was stretch that like that. Grab the blue one, stretch it. Oopsie. Stretch the blue one. And I stretched the yellow one. You know, I'm thinking I might not have wanted to make my offset quite so thick because it shows up so much but you'll get the idea on how to do this. And this is really uh, your choice how you do it. So you could work on this and make it however you'd like. Now, if you actually knew these kids and maybe wanted to put their names on it or it was their birthday or some special occasion, you know, you could put that over here, which would be on the opposite side of the mug. Now, something I noticed about the little boy is he's a little bit dark looking, right? His, his face is a little dark. So how you can fix that a little bit in this program is come over here to this little shape that looks like a half of a moon. Again, I have a lot of programs open that I should have closed first. Like, for example, this, my Kindle. I don't need that open. All right, so... What I would do then is come to the second button over that has the brightness and contrast. And watch, when I take this little lever, see how much brighter I can get him to be? So you can actually see his face more. Here's the way it was. And then if I just slide that this way, it allows me to see his face more clearly. So I could do that to him. Don't think I need to do it to her. What I might like to do to her is change the saturation a little bit. Let's see if I can do that. Not the brightness. I think she was bright enough. It's going to change the saturation. There we go. To make that yellow of that dress a little bit more yellow. Okay. And, and again, like I said, I think if I was doing this again, um, but I know y'all don't want to stay and watch that much, I wouldn't make those offsets so thick because I think that's a little overkill. But you, know, you can do it however you like it and rearrange these however you like them. And what I did when there were some that were going over the edge, and the, oh, by the way, the one I'm going to print out to show you at the end, I've already done that. I'm stepping back in time and doing this. So it's going to look a little bit different than this one. But it's a basic idea, though. Okay, so that should be pretty good, just like that. And again, like I said, I could write text over here if I wanted to, or even over top of them or under them, whatever. But I'd want to maybe get rid of some of these things up here. 
I just get my knife tool, hold down my shift. I have the knife on solid, straight, and auto apply. Hold down my shift key so it stays nice and straight. Just go across and that's going to cut those pieces off like that that I don't need. Okay, and I can just delete those. I can do the same thing on the side. Knife tool, shift, go down, auto applies it. Perfectly gone, delete. Again, right here, shift, perfect. I think maybe I may have been a little bit off on this edge, so I'm going to scroll in just to look and see. Yeah, see that's a little bit off, so I'm going to get my knife tool again, hold down my shift key, and grab that again. So now it'll be more flush. Perfect. Okay, so then this is ready to be printed, so I'll do that next and I will carry on. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this. I'm having so much fun. But you, you, you'll be surprised how many photos you're going to find now to put on here. I mean, family reunions, relatives, dance recitals, all kinds of stuff, football games that kids are playing in. So it's going to be a lot of fun for you. If you get the sublimation, you don't need the mug press. You could do it with the um, regular heat press with sublimation. Or don't forget... You can also use that printable paper that I keep showing. I'll have a link for it down below. You don't need to have sublimation ink. You use an ink jet printer for that one. This one uses a sublimation printer. So let me continue on. Okay, since this is complete, I have now printed it. To print it, I just went up here to File, Print, and I just say print here again. Then I come up to my settings and I'll change it to my Epson 7720. That's the one I use for sublimation. Go to preferences and make sure I have the sublimation uh, area clicked. And this is something I made myself. I added right here by adding a preset once I figured out what I needed it to be for sublimation. Now, I'm using Cosmos ink and it's linked down below and I'm using an Epson printer and the paper I showed you the other day, I'll have it linked below. But anyway, with that, what I need to do is first come here to plain paper, white, more settings. I go to more settings and I shove this thing all the way over to high for the quality. And then I also came up here to more options, came to the color correction, custom, advanced, and for the paper and the ink I'm using, I make it ICM. And so then that's ready to be printed, so let me show you what I got. Okay, here again is my mug. I'm using an 11 inch mug that I get from Heat Press Nation. I'll have a link below. And my image, I'll make sure I have my image right side up and facing the mug. And I will just start going here and trying to make sure that it's evenly spaced by the handle pretty much. And I like to make sure that it's spaced evenly on the bottom rim so that there's some white space at the bottom. Okay. I'll get a piece of tape that I've already torn off. I have ready over here. Okay, again, I'm looking around here, making sure that it's even. Holding it pretty firmly. I'm just getting some more tape. And my last piece of tape and my heat press is already warmed up so this is ready to put in let's take it one more check 
Then bring this forward so you can see it. So now I'm ready to put this in the press. Like that. Make sure the handle's kind of straight up. And then just close this. Should be a firm pressure. Start my timer. The timer's going to go for 190 seconds. So I'll meet you back here. Okay, my timer's just about to be over. So I've got my pot holder. Okay, that timer's up. I'll release the mug from the press. Carefully take it out. It will be very, very hot. Maybe you can see it's smoking some. I'll take this off. Let's do it this way so you can hopefully see a little bit. And let's see how it turned out. So I can hold it by the handle, but I can't touch the actual mug. So let's see if you can see. Look how nice that is. And there are the kids that I found. I think it's super cute. Thanks so much for joining me again today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this sublimation tutorial to see how easy it is to use your own photographs of anything on a mug or a shirt or anything that you so desire. So again, thanks for joining me. Check out my links down below. Join us on Facebook. See you later. Bye.